May I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. When you look at your life with the days that have shaped your longing, when you gaze with compassion at your pilgrimage, noticing the landscape, the mountains and valleys, the places where the sun shines and the length of shadows touch you with a chill at times. Where would you say is your heart's abode? That dwelling place, the sanctuary of your life and seat of wisdom, is a light that reveals to us the treasures we have given ourselves over to. And what do we find there? When our eldest son, Austin, was a lot younger than he is now, I would repeat this scripture to myself as I rubbed his back, encouraging to both sleep and stay asleep. And whilst sleep felt like an elusive treasure, there was within my very grasp God's healing and promise to me. I had always feared being a father due to my experience being fathered. I ran from it with the determination of an Olympic marathon runner. I feared loving another person. I feared real contact, intimacy, vulnerability. To a point, I had domesticated my life and the vision I held for my life. The wildness of God, the untamable life of Jesus, the expansive life of the Holy Spirit was a rumor at best, if not simply something for them and not me. My attachment to fear, to a constricted life, a controlled, apparently safe and secure life became the treasure I offered to my soul the place where I would find my heart. And so as a wounded healer and priest, I lived a way of life that ensured stability and protection from the kiss of God who desired the wild life that each of us are called to. And what is this wild life? It is in our ashing and the proclamation to repent, that is, to go beyond the fixed vision and mind that we have told ourselves so often is our deepest truth. The treasure I offered my soul was that of disconnection. I believe distance from loving would keep me safe due to my history. Closeness meant pain, heartbreak. And so a truth was born. Stay away, stay safe. The call of Jesus, though, is the call to connection. Connection with the one who is the friend of life and the energy and light within our souls. To pray, to fast, to love, to be compassionate are God's invitation to reconnect to that which truly gives life. They call into question what we treasure. They bring light to the heart's abode and what we believe to be our life's wellspring. But as the Baptist cries at the beginning of Advent, God makes straight a path in the desert, that is, in the wild. Lent is indeed our preparation for Easter. And our preparation surely has to begin with the clarity as to not only where we find ourselves, but who we believe we are. Who is it sitting in this pew, standing in this pulpit? Who do you say you are? And what shapes that belief that you hold so dearly? 
For the vision of your life shapes your life and your ability to connect to the one who is the source of all life. We become like the one we love. Our actions, our habits, our way of loving and forgiving will actually reveal with greater clarity who we are and what we believe more than what we tell ourselves. With compassion and great tenderness, the Holy Spirit will offer truths in moments where the ideas we hold about our life will come crashing down where our understanding of how life should be falls apart. That is what repentance often looks like. It looks like us re-evaluating life and the journey thus far. The next step, if we dare to change our life script and the story we tell ourselves about our life and the lives of others, is the place where we reconnect to our wild nature our expanded sense of self, our God-self, or what we call Christ living within us. The war in the Ukraine and the accidents of the actions of President Putin are the magnified vision of what we are looking at this day. The dramas that we create, the truth we create, the story we tell ourselves about life and our neighbor is often a life straining dimly in the shadow. The light of Christ that illumines the heart, the eye, and the soul reveal the deeper truth we are invited to live. And the wildness is caught up in a connected way of being, in compassion, in justice and reconciliation. This is the gift God invites us to offer ourselves and our neighbor. Where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. And so let us pause and ask, where is my heart? Where is my treasure? But let us resist the temptation to answer with words. <laughs>